Testing, one, two, three. Janelle, Mike, uh, testing in the, on the uh, board inside. Testing, one, two, three. Mike. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Why Mike test one two three?
Welcome to Greater Young Zion, where there's no strangers, only friends who haven't met. My name is James Griffin and a proud member of the media ministry. 1 Corinthians 11.26 says, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord, you to show the Lord's death till he comes. We wanted to have communion service with you, so we're going to go outside to the parking lot. Why don't you join us? Let's go. Good morning, Greater Young Zion. My name is Reverend Eugene Washington. I'm one of the associate ministers here at Greater Young Zion, and this is our call to worship. The Bible says, Call unto me, and I'll answer thee, and show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. That's Jeremiah 33 3. And our scripture reading for today will come out of the book of John, chapter 15, verse 8. And it says, Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. Let us pray. Father God, once again, we just come before you to say thank you. You woke us up, covered and clothed in our right mind. You brought us to the house of God that we may hear with thus saith the Lord. Now, Father God, I ask now that you do in our lives only that which is needed. Help us, Father God, to be more obedient unto the word of God, that we may glorify thee and not ourselves. For this is our prayer that we ask in Jesus' name. And let it be heart that loves the Lord say amen. Amen, 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 amen. GYZ, come on. Everybody bump your horns. Choir members, come on in. Come on in, choir members. I have that blue tape marked. All choir members that want to do it. Let's give Minister Winona Hatcher a beep of praise. Choir members, choir members, come on up. It's time to come on. Good morning, Grady Young Zion. We are blessed this morning. How many blessed in the house? Toot your horns if you are blessed. You're blessed coming in. You're blessed going out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. I don't know about you, but I miss you guys. Oh, my goodness. Oh my goodness, miss you guys. Through all the trials and tribulations, even at the house, pressed down sometimes, mind over go, but we know that we have a God who still loves us and cares about us. And because of who we are and who he is, we gonna sing today, bless. I want y'all to get ready, y'all know this, right? I know you do. Everybody say bless, 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 bless. Everybody say bless, 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 bless. We're blessed, we're blessed, we're blessed. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the fields. We're blessed when we come and we we cast down sickness and poverty by the devil. Everybody say bless, 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 bless. 
everybody say bless, 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 bless. We're blessed, we're blessed, we're blessed. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the fields. We're blessed when we come. And we cast out sickness and poverty from the day. The devil don't like it cause you're blessed like that. The devil don't like it cause you're blessed like that. The devil don't like it cause you're blessed like that. I'm blessed like that. You're blessed like that. We're blessed like that. The devil don't like it. Telling you like. Telling you like, and God's gonna turn it, and around, and around, and around, and around. Telling you like, and God's gonna turn it. It's gonna work. The devil don't like it 'cause you're blessed like that. The devil don't like it 'cause you're blessed like that. The devil don't like it 'cause you're blessed like that. The devil don't like it 'cause you're blessed like that. I'm blessed like that. You're blessed like that. We're blessed like that. The devil don't like it. Telling you lies. Turn it. It's gonna work. Yes, it will. Telling you like, come on, God. Turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around. That home, those finances, and how bears. He's turning it. Turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around. Telling you. It's gonna work. work Everybody say, say yeah, 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 It ain't over. It ain't over till God says so. Come on, let's make some Holy Ghost crazy noise in here. Beep your horn if you love Jesus. Ha! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now the mighty man of God, the word bringer, Pastor William B. Blunt. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, Lord, let it prove to be acceptable in your sight for Lord you are my strength and Lord you are indeed my redeemer and this we ask in the name of Jesus the Christ we pray let us all say together amen hop if you love the Lord today amen 
Another parking lot communion. Man, we are excited about what God is doing and what God will continue to do and continue to bless us. Amen. Kicking off the month of August with a brand new series that we're going to be doing. We're talking about the secrets of a well-lived life. The secrets of a well-lived life. Amen. And we're going to start off this morning by talking about the secrets of a productive life of a productive life. And we're looking at the key scripture we're looking at is uh, John 15 and verse number 8. And uh, we're going to go throughout John 15 and we're going to deal with that uh, on this morning. Amen. Amen. Want to say amen? Just honk your horn. That's all you got to do. <laughs> amen. God bless you this morning, man. God bless you this morning. Let me tell you something. The goal of every person in life ought to want to live a productive life. You ought to want to live a productive life. You ought to want to live a life that matters. You ought to live a life that counts. Amen? You don't want to waste your time here. You know, live a productive life. And particularly if you're a Christian, because as a Christian, you know, Jesus told us in John 10, 10, he said, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and destroy, but I come that you might have what? Life. And how do you have that life? It's a more abundant life. More abundant life. Amen? That is a super productive life. A, a life that really what? That counts. And so th it's amazing that Jesus had this concern in his heart because in John 15, Jesus is getting ready to go to the cross. And in, before he goes, through, goes through, ready to go to the cross, he wanted the, the disciples to understand what it means to live an effective life, how to be productive in what they were actually doing. Now, now productivity uh, in, in our natural sense in the biblical sense, the word productivity is not there. He uses the word called fruitful. He uses the word called fruitful. Amen? And so the productive life for the Christian is a fruitful life. And Jesus told him, man, in John 15, 8, he said, look, he said, I come that you want. I want you to bear much fruit. I want you to have fruit in your life. And, you know, have fruit. So what is the word is fruit? What fruit is? Amen? Fruit is the visible expression or visible manifestation of the work of the invisible God that's living in you. That's fruit. That's fruit. And Jesus kind of explains it to us because he explains it to us by showing us the parallel of the relationship uh, that we have. He said, guess what? My father is the husbandman. My father owns the vineyard. Amen. He said, guess what? I am the vine. That means I am the tree. He said, what are you? You are what? The branches. So the branches are connected to the tree. The fruit, if you ever notice this, the fruit is not the product of the branch. The fruit is the product of the tree. So whenever you talk about fruit, you don't give the glory to the branch. You give the glory to the tree. So when you say apples, you said apple tree. You say pear, you say pear tree. Because what's the fruit? The fruit is the manifestation of what's invisible in the tree. And what he does, he produces the fruit through the branch. So we are the branches, and God says we are the what? To produce the fruit. Now, there are three things I want you to write down today that's going to be helpful to you. Number one, I want you to understand that the glory of God is in the fruit. And in, in, uh, uh, John 15 and 8, he said that your father might be glorified. Glory is the goal of every Christian. The glory of God is the goal of every believer. In 1 Corinthians 10, 31, uh, he says, Whatsoever you do, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, you do it for the what? For the glory of God. Amen? For the glory of God. Why? What is the glory? The glory is the visible manifestation of the invisible God that's living in your life. And that's what Jesus said when he said, let your light so shine so that men can what? See it. And then what do they do? They turn around and give the glory what? To God. So what is invisible now becomes visible through us. And so I want you to write this down. The glory of God is your look. It's what people see. It's what people see. The second thing I want you to understand about the glory of God, uh, the glory of God proves that you are a disciple. I mean, the fruit proves that you are a disciple. And what's a disciple? A disciple is someone whose behavior 
is a reflection of what they learned from somebody else. So when you look at your behavior, where did you learn that from? Where did you learn that from? And, and so the fruit is to be able to say, hey, I do what I do because this is what I learned for Christ. Why do you love your wife? Because I love the way I love you because this is what I learned from Christ. You know, I treat you the way I treat you because this is what I learned from Christ. That's a disciple. That's a disciple. So the fruit, number one, Give evidence of the glory of God. Fruit number two, that's your look. Fruit number two is give evidence that you are a disciple of Christ. That's your learning. But here's fruit number three. He said, I want you to bear much fruit. Again, we're talking about John 15 and 8. I want you to bear much fruit. In other words, I want you to be loaded. We get loaded. You know, I'm going to tell you something. The creator God is always uh, does things in a way that he always gives us more resources than what we need. He gives us more resources than what we need. And so when people see you, and you got a great God on the inside of you, then greatness ought to come out of you. So it's not mediocrity. You ought to be loaded with that. And so that's what God expects us to have in terms of fruit. Amen? And so the fruit, the brother one, he wants us to bear fruit for the glory of God. He wants us to bear fruit, uh, one, because that proves we're a disciple. He wants us to bear fruit, number three, why? Because it lets people know, hey, we're loaded with it. You know that? I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not decent, I'm dynamic. I'm not good, but I'm great. Because that's the manifestation of the God that lives on the inside of me. Now, there are four kinds of fruit that you need to have. Four kinds of fruit uh, that, you, uh, that you need to have. Amen? And the first kind of fruit that you need to have, number one, is the fruit of repentance. Write that down. The Bible talks about the fruit of repentance. Matthew chapter 3 and verse number 8. That you ought to sow fruits worthy of what? Repentance. Now, what is repentance? What is the fruit of repentance? Now, we know that repentance comes from the Greek word metanomia. Metanomia means a change of mind. But what is the fruit that comes from a change in your mind? A change in your mind should be a reflection of the change of control. So when you show fruits of repentance, you're saying, I'm no longer in control of this area of my life. God is now in control of this area of my life. That's the fruits of repentance. It's not walking around talking about you sorry or walking around telling you remorseful. Are you willing to give up control? Are you willing to let God control this area of your life? See, that's what it's called, the fruits of repentance. Amen? And then the second one you already know, it's called the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5, 22, and verse number 23. What is the fruit of the Spirit? Those are fruits that are in your character. They're called attitudinal fruits. Attitudinal fruits are important uh, as a prelude to action fruit. So you got to have an attitude fruit to have the right action proof. People don't do the right action because they don't have the right attitude. And so here's the attitude that you got to have in Galatians 5, 22, 23. There are nine of them. These are the attitudes that make you be able to manifest more and more like Christ. So if you have, have the right attitude fruits, you're going to have the fruit of love and peace and joy and patience and goodness and long-suffering and temperance and faith. I mean, all of these things in meekness, they're going to be part, they're going to come out of your attitude. And so this is part of your character fruit, your character fruit. Here's number three. And I hope I'm not boring you this morning. Number three is the fruit of winning someone to Christ. The fruit of many somebody to Christ. Let me tell you something. The fruit of a Christian is another Christian. And so therefore, for greater young sign to say that we are church, what are we making? What are we making? That's the whole thing of the Great Commission, Matthew 28, and, uh, 18, and uh, 18 to 20. And we just says, go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teach them to observe all things. In other words, let teach them, number one, to be in the authority of God. Number two, to teach them what? To live a sanctified life. The word observe means to live it out. So the reason why you come to church, because the church's job is to help make you a Christian. 
He said, a lot of you got an interest, but you need to come to the church to learn how to be a Christian. To learn how to be a Christian. And that's the fruit that needs to come from this church and from this ministry. Amen? Somebody get me a towel, please. I've asked that one time before. Uh, from the church and from this ministry. This is so important that you need to understand that. Amen? Here's the fourth uh, fruit that you need to have. The fruit of a ministry to other people. The fruit of a ministry to other people. I've told you this hundreds of times, that the fruit of a tree is never for the tree. The tree produces fruit to benefit somebody else. So what is your ministry? Your ministry is what God has given to you to help somebody else. That's your ministry. It's whatever God has given to you to help somebody else. John 13, 34 and 35, Jesus said this, a new commandment I give you. What is that commandment? That you love one another as I have what? Love you. Why? Because by this men are going to know you are my disciples. Why? Because you love one another. So how is love manifested? First John 3, 18. Love is not manifested in tongue or manifested in word. But love is shown in deed and in what? Truth. So it's very important that when you're saying that you are blessed from God, how is your blessing proven to be a blessing to somebody else? To somebody else. Does that make any sense? Does that make any sense? Because, see, people don't give it because they don't have it. People who don't bless your life, it's because they don't have nothing to bless your life with. People don't give you peace because they don't have peace. And so if God has blessed you as you said he has and anointed your life the way you said it has, then what is your ministry? How many of you are married today? If you're married today. What is your ministry to your husband? What has God given you for your husband? What is your ministry to your wife? What has God has given you for your wife? How is that person benefited by having you in their life? See? And so those are the four types of fruit, amen? Those are the four types of fruit. Now, how do you do this fruit? What are the conditions of fruit? What is the conditions of the fruit? Now, let me give you four things, and I'm going to leave you alone. I want to leave you alone. What a kickoff this morning, amen? What a kickoff this morning. Amen. So, so preacher, preacher, you're telling me I need to bear fruit, but how do I do it? I mean, how do I bear fruit? Let me give you four conditions that you need to make in order to bear fruit. Now, here's the first one I want you to be able to do. I want you to be able to do it. First one, write this down. Write this word down, cultivate. you got to cultivate your deep roots. You got to cultivate your roots. Why? Because you can't have fruit without root. See, your root determines your fruit. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Amen. How do you think a tree stands? The tree stands because of the roots. Jeremiah 17 really helped me out. Jeremiah 17 to 7. And he says, hey, if you put your confidence and your trust in the Lord. Then he comes back in verse number 8. He said, and you will be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water. But then he says some things that are that really powerful, Barry. This is what he says. He says this. He says, you're going to be able to overcome two conditions in your life that can damage your tree. And what are the two conditions of your life? He said, heat and drought. Heat and drought. Now, Pastor, how in the world, well, well, what does that actually mean? What it, what it means? What it means? The reason why you got to have roots, because you got to be able to take the heat. And what is the heat? The heat are the stresses and pressures that all of us go through in life. It's just something, it's just life. You're going to go through stresses, you're going to go through pressures, and you're going to go through things in your life that you don't have the ability to handle. So if your roots are not deep enough, when those stresses come against you, when the heat comes in your life, some of you going to panic 
and some of you going to dry up and some of you going to wither, it's because your roots are not deep enough. Oh, my God. Amen. Oh, my God. Amen. Man, you got to have deep roots to know how to take a liquor and keep right on ticking. You got to have deep roots because in this world, you're going to have some tribulations. In this world, you're going to have some trials, some troubles, and temptations in your life. So the question is, can you take the heat? Can you take the heat? People lose their mind because they can't take the heat. Amen? People wear themselves out because they cannot take what? The heat. And so here's the first thing. The first thing you need to do, you got to cultivate your deep roots. You got to cultivate your deep roots, amen? Because you got to deal with the heat. Now, here's the number two. You got to deal with the drought. Now, what is the drought? Is the drought whenever there's a lack of rain. When there's a lack of rain for a period of time, you're in a drought. Rain is the key to productivity. You cannot produce if it don't rain. And so there comes a time in your life and I don't know about you, but I can testify that it just ain't raining. Oh, wait a minute. Has anybody ever been to a drought? Anybody ever been to a drought? Anybody ever had a situation in your life where your need was not being met? Had a situation in your life where you needed comfort, but you wasn't getting it? Had a situation in your life that you needed some form of relationship that you were not getting it? Had a situation in your life that you needed a friend, but you didn't have one? had a situation in your life that you just in a drought. And man, you got to have some deep roots or you might wind up losing your mind. You got to learn how to handle a drought. Oh my God, amen. Ever call upon the Lord and he delayed in coming to your rescue? Ever had a sickness in your life at a time that you really want to be busy for God? Now you're sick. Now that the enemy is attacking your body, now you say, oh God, I don't know how to get out of this thing. Anybody had financial stress in your life? You said, man, I don't want my life to be like this. Man, you got to have roots that are deep enough to know how to take all of that and still stand. Oh my God, amen. It's your roots. It's your roots, man. I'm telling you, man. It's your roots. In California, one of the biggest trees in California when I was out there, it's called a redwood. Now, redwoods are very big trees, and they survive storms and all kinds of things that goes against the redwood. But let me tell you something I learned about a redwood tree. If you ever notice them, they're always close together. They're always close together. The reason why those trees are able to stand, because in the ground, the roots intertwine with one another. So one tree roots get tied up with another tree roots, and that tree root get tied up in another tree root. I'm telling you, man, if you want your roots to go deep enough, you got to be connected to somebody else. That's why you in church, because I want to get my roots tied up with your roots, and your roots tied up with my roots. And that's why you need to be in the brotherhood. That's why you need to be in the small group. That's why you need to be in the, the covenant sisters. That's why you need to be in the singles ministry, because you got to tie your roots up, because when the heat comes, you want to be able to stand. When the drought comes, you want to be able to stand, not wither, not panic, but praise God. Anybody know what I'm talking about? The Bible said your leaves ought to stay green. Lisa, ought to stay green. Anybody know what I'm talking about? The same way I praise him when I had money, I praise him the same way when I'm broke. The same way I praise him when things are, I have everything I need, I praise him when I'm struggling. The same way I praise him when there was not a crisis, I'm praising him in a crisis. The same way I'm praising him when there wasn't a virus, I'm praising him with the virus. Because the Bible said your leaves will stay green. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Now, Pastor, how do you do? I mean, how do you get your roots? How do you get the roots going in your life? Psalm 1, 2, and 3. Watch this now. Delight thyself. In the law of the Lord, meditate on the word of God day 
and night. And, and it's a conjunction. That means those two things are connected together. Those two things are connected together. If I stay meditated on the word of God, memorize the word of God, keep my mind on the word of God, and I will be like a tree that planted by the rivers of water that will bear fruit in my season and my leaves will not wither and guess what happened whatever i do is gonna prosper the haters hate on you but you still go prosper your critics criticize you but you still go prosper the people put you down but you still go prosper because you know how to take the heat and you know how to take the drought so number one you got to cultivate deep roots that's number one amen Here's number two. Here's number two. You got to eliminate your weeds. Let me tell you something. You can plant a seed and the fruit will go up. But you better have some weed killer. And there's a whole lot of us, man, we got weed problem. We got weed problem. I mean, good people. God is doing some great things in your life, but you're not effective. And you're not productive because of your weeds. Luke 8. Now Jesus tells this parable of the parable of the sower. You remember the parable of the sower? And the sower went to sow seed. The sower was the preacher. The seed was the word of God. The sower represented the hearts of the people that received the word. So, so therefore, it, your heart is going to be based on your response to the word of God. So Jesus talks about four kinds of soil. He talks about the hard-hearted. He talks about not only the hard-hearted, but the impulsive-hearted. Then he talks about the crowded-hearted. And then he talks about the good-hearted. But to keep with this message today, I don't want to preach the soil. I want to stay with the one that deals with the weeds. So that is the crowded-hearted. Many of us are not productive or effective for God because your heart is too crowded. And your crowded heart are the weeds that are killing the productivity. Notice what Jesus said in Luke 8, 14. In Luke chapter 8, and verse number 14. He says, the sower sows the seed. And as the, seed, the fruit begins to come up, it's choked out. By three things, by the cares, by the riches, and by the pleasures of the hearts of the people who receive it. Your cares, your riches, your pleasure are the weeds that's choking out the productivity, the effectiveness that God wants to do in your life. Now, what do you mean by that, Pastor? Let me break that down. What do you mean by that? Break that down. Amen. Number one, what is your care? Your cares are really the things you give an attention to that keeps you from building up your faith and building up your life in God. That's your cares. You know, you give you you, you so much attention to your life that now you don't have the energy to even read the Bible. You're giving us so much attention in your life, you don't have the energy to pray. You don't have the time to do it. Because too many other things are getting your attention that you're neglecting what you need to be given to God to build up your faith and be effective in your fruitfulness. You think about it. You don't have time to come to the brotherhood. You don't have time to call on the prayer line. You know what? Anything that keeps you from not being able to call on the, on the prayer line is a weed. Anything that keeps you from participating in the small group is a weed. Anything that keeps you from being able to participate with the women's fellowship is a weed. Anything when we were in church that kept you from being at church when the church was assembled is a weed. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Because your attention is on other things. And those things are choking out the things of God. And you're not effective. And you're not productive in your life. 
I had to learn, man, even TV watching can become a weed. You get so caught up in the television that you don't spend time in prayer or spend time in study of the Word of God. And I can, every day, every day of your life, you got to keep chopping your weeds. You got to keep eliminating the weeds in my life. Anybody here got some weeds that you need to keep chopping at? You got to keep it eliminating. I can be more effective for the kingdom if I can get rid of the weeds. Got to eliminate the weeds, man. Number one is the care. Number two is riches. Two is riches. We're so preoccupied with making money. So preoccupied with making a living that we don't have the time to even make a life. We neglect our children. We neglect our relationships. We neglect our families. All for the sake of money. All for the sake of money. And people come, and money can become a weed. Oh, my God. Y'all get quiet. You become a weed. And what about pleasure? What about pleasure? Your hobbies. The things that take up your time. Your, your vacations. How have you neglected God when you're on vacation? How have you neglected your responsibility to God because of some pleasure that you wanted? You got to eliminate the weeds that are in your life because those are the things going to cut your productivity down. The weeds going to choke it out. And you get to the point, man, you don't even feel like being here. You don't feel like serving God because you allow too many other things to get your attention. You're allowed to be too preoccupied with money and materialism. And you allow yourself to get too preoccupied, amen, with pleasure and pleasing yourself. And the weeds choke out your life, amen. Here's number three. I'm just trying to get you to be more fruitful, amen. Here's number three. You got to cooperate with God when he proves you. 51 and 2. For every branch that doesn't bear that fruit, he cuts away. He prunes it. He cuts it away. What is the pruning? The pruning is to cut the dead branches and even some of the live branches so you can shape it and stimulate it to what? To perpetuate further growth. And so many times in my life, how many of you ever felt like God somehow abandoned you? Uh, God is somehow not listening to you. God, why are you letting this happen? God, why are you letting this happen? See, you got to understand that Romans 8, 28 said all things will work together for good. All things mean what? All things. So what you think is a punishment is really a pruning. God says, I'm allowing this to happen because this is going to prune you. This is going to make you more effective. I allowed this friendship not to work out because I had to cut this person out of your life. Why? Because you will not be as effective with this person in your life. So God is what? He's pruning. I didn't let the marriage work out. Why? Because this person cannot help you to become the best you need to be for me. So I had to cut this person out of your life in order what? To prune it. You know what? You know what? I had to let you lose that job. Why? Because that job was interfering with your commitment to me. So I had to cut Cut that job. Why? Because I want you to be more effective when it comes to me. Many of us go through pruning. Stop talking about going through punishment. Jesus already took the punishment. He already took the punishment. Whenever God lets something happen in my life, it's for my development. Whatever it's in my life that he doesn't deliver me from, it's because he's trying to develop me. Whatever God allows me to lose, it's because he has a better idea for me. And you don't always understand that. You're just pruning you. Amen? See, punishment is about your past. Pruning is about your future. Punishment is negative. Pruning is positive. And what you got to do, man, you got to look at the positive that God is getting ready to do in your life. Every time, man, things kind of fall apart in my life or things don't look like it's coming together, I know God is up to something. I know he's up to something. I know he's getting ready to promote me. I know he's getting ready to lift me to another level. I know he's getting ready to bless me. Anybody here can testify that ministry can come out of your misery. God can turn around and say, hey, man, he was just pruning me. How many of you thought something was a bad thing and the bad thing turned out to be a good thing? And you thought what was a punishment 
was a nothing but a pruning. So God, man, you stay respond, you respond to God, stay with God, stay with God because He's just pruning. Don't worry about it. He's just pruning you. He's just pruning you. He's just doing that. You know what? He slowed you down. You know why he caused the virus? He said, I want to make you more serious about me. I want you to spend more time with your family. I want you to spend more time with your children. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You know why he let this virus happen? He said he's getting ready not to cripple greater young Zion, but to expand greater young Zion. So he put the media ministry and moved us from local to global. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? It's because what you think was a punishment was nothing but a pruning. Anybody thank God for the pruning? Anybody thank God for the pruning? How does God prune us, man? How does God prune us? Three things he prunes us. Number one, he prunes us with people. Your critics, your haters, the people that misjudge you, the people that misunderstand you, even the people that attack you are part of the pruning that God is doing in your life. Stop whining and stop complaining about that, man, because you know what? You just learn to depend more on God. You learn to trust him more. To every critic, to every hater, to every person that misjudge you, to every person that misunderstand you, shut your mouth, take it. You don't have to respond because you know it's just part of the pruning process. Amen? God is working on me to make me more effective in what I'm doing. He uses people. Amen. And not only God uses people, he uses problems. He uses problems. And one of the problems you're talking about, he uses your own problems. He uses the things you, you create yourself. He uses the mistakes you make yourself. He uses the misjudgment. He uses your own sinfulness. He uses everything. Everything is designed to develop you. Everything. Every problem I have is designed to develop me. Whatever I am today is the total of everything he allows to happen in my life. Everything was part of my pruning. Every, every, every disappointment, every heartbreak, every tear, every struggle I had in my life was part of my pruning. And that's where my passion comes from and my purpose comes from. God will... He will prune you through problems. Thirdly, he'll prune you not only through problems, not only through people, but he'll prune you through pressure. The things that happen in your life, man, the death of your loved ones, relationships break up, heartbreaks, laid off from your job, the pressures we go through in our life, God is separately pruning us. Because through it all, we learn to trust in Jesus. And through it all, we learn to trust in God. And through it all, we learn to depend upon his word. How many of you in here today would just praise God for the people? Praise God for the problems. And praise God for the pressures that we've gone through in our life. I want you to write this scripture down, Hebrews 12 and 11. In Hebrews 12 and verse number 11, for the Bible said when God chastised you, it is what? It is what? It is grievous in the beginning. Amen? But if you stay with God, it will yield a peaceable fruit in your life. I'm sorry if I've been up here too long for you today. But let me give you one more and I'm going to leave you alone. If you want to bear fruit, you got to cultivate deep roots. You got to eliminate your weeds. You got to cooperate with God when he's pruning you. Don't quit. Don't walk away. Don't throw your hands up. Don't leave. You got to stay with it. Because see, 
if you don't cultivate your roots, you know what a plant is without a root? You know what that's called? A plant that doesn't have a root is called a tumbleweed. And all it does is that a tumbleweed, you see it, it's just blowing all around the desert. It's just blowing all around the desert. Some of you are living a tumbleweed life because you don't have any roots. So all you're doing, you're just going from one church to another church, one ministry to another ministry, one place to another place, one job to another job. It's all because your roots have not being established. You know, people always look at me and say, you've been at Greater Young Zion 37 years? Man, I can't believe you've been at that church for 37 years. Roots. <laughs> you got to learn how to stand when the heat comes and stand when the drought comes. And says what? All your haters, your critics, and everybody else, I'm still here. Because the roots go deep enough. You got to cultivate deep roots, eliminate your weeds. Amen. Cooperate with the pruning. Final thing, you got to patiently wait on your harvest. Let me tell you something. Nobody plant a seed and the harvest come the next day. Nobody plant a tree and the tree grows up the next day. I don't care. Let me tell you something. Some of the greatest frustration in your life is when you're in God's waiting room. <laughs> and some people, man, some people say, Lord, look like the ministry ought to be further along than what it is now. Look like, look like, look like everybody ought to be acting different by now. I mean, after 37 years, you know, why are we still in this waiting room? And I'm going to tell you, man, God will put you in the waiting room. And many people become frustrated because they don't know how to handle the waiting room. And you got to be patient when God puts you in the waiting room. Now watch this now. And John 12, 24, I began to learn why God delays us. I began to learn that, Amen. And that's what it says. Unless a seed is planted, and listen, here's the key point, and dies, it cannot bear fruit. So it, it, it's not enough for a tree, a seed, to be put in the ground. The seed has to die in order for the seed to bring forth fruit. The problem why God is delaying you because you don't want to go through the dying process. Because God says, hey, hey, you could have had this much quicker but there was something in you that needed to die in order for me to produce the fruit that I want to have in your life. You could have been married by now, but there's something in your character that needs to die. And until that dies, the fruit would never come in your life. So the delay is because you reject the dying process. You reject it. And now all of us in here who are here today, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you ask God, what is delaying my blessing? What's delaying? What's delaying your blessing? Why are you not getting what I want for you? What's delaying your blessing? What in you needs to die that you won't let die? Got to go through what's called a dying process. Got to go through the dying process. Amen? Because if you don't, you spend the rest of your life in the waiting room. Just sitting in the waiting room. Just sitting in the waiting room. There's some habits you got need to die. 
There's some, there's, there's some things that you are committed to, but it ain't going to get you the blessing that God wants you to have until you let that die. There's some programs on TV you need to turn off. You need to stop looking at that. You need to let that die. There's some people in your life that you hold it on to that God is trying to get away from you from. And it ain't going to work in your life till you let those relationships die. And the way you let it die is that you stop feeding it. If you stop feeding it, you'll starve it to death. That's my challenge to you today. You want to live a productive life? You want to bear much fruit? How many of you want to do it? <laughs> this is what you got to do. You got to cultivate deep roots. You got to keep planting your roots. I read that Bible. I stay in that word because I don't know what kind of heat coming. And I want to be able to take that heat and keep preaching. I don't know what kind of drops going to happen. But I want to be able to take the drought and keep preaching. I want to be able to cultivate roots. I got some weeds I need to eliminate. I got some stuff that's choking out my effectiveness. Then I want to cooperate with God when he cuts stuff out of my life, when he pruned me. He got to cut this out, cut this out. I had to get off a lot of committees, a lot of things I was doing like, was good work. But God said, you got to prune from that. You're never being effective at what I want you to do, trying to be in the boys club, trying to be in this club, trying to be in this group, trying to be in that group. They're good things, but I got to cut that out. So when God prunes you, you got to cooperate with that. And then lastly, I'm going to tell you today, man, you got to patiently wait in the waiting room. And you got to be willing to die to whatever's going to die. But here's the last thing I want to tell you. John 15, 4 and 5, stay with that. If you abide on the vine, just stay with Christ. Remain there. No matter what happens, stay on the vine. Don't disconnect yourself from Jesus Christ. Don't disconnect yourself from your commitment to him. I don't care. You may get aggravated, frustrated, and want to throw up your hand and say, man, I'm tired of this. But I got to stay connected to Jesus Christ. Because he ends it by saying that without me, you can do nothing. Hug for the Lord, man. God bless you. Hallelujah today. Hallelujah today. Amen. In a time like this, you're going to need a Savior. And you're definitely going to need an anchor. If you're not in Christ Jesus, you need to commit yourself. To Christ Jesus. And I don't care where you are today. If you're in these cars today, or wherever you are, and you're not sure of your relationship with Jesus Christ, hey man, I just want you to just what? Just get out your car and say, hey, I need somebody to talk to me. We got some preachers out there. My preachers haunt. Wherever my preachers at. They'll be able to minister to you today. If you're listening my airways, you can call our church, 706-724. 1720, we have one of our ministers get you back with you, talk to you, minister to you, pray with you. We want you to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Get connected to the tree and stay there, no matter what happens in your life. Because your best is yet to come. Amen? And I don't know about you. But I want to maximize my blessing when it comes to Jesus Christ. Amen? Now we're getting ready for our Holy Communion. <clears throat> if everybody's been served, if you've not been served, if you honk, let us know where you are. Our very fine deacons will make sure that you get served on today. Amen? No matter where you are, we want to make sure that it's just wonderful. Isn't it wonderful today? God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Communion is three phases. Three phases of communion. God said, I want you to remember this. The reason why we do communion because celebration stimulate memory. God says, some things you just don't need to forget. You need to remember this. So as often as you do this, you do this what? In remembrance of me. I celebrate my birthday. Why? Because celebrations help me to remember the fact that God gave me another year. He didn't have to do it, but he did it. He gave me another year. Celebrations are part of memory, amen? 
Then the second thing about communion is important. It's a time of reflection. Reflection of my life in Christ. Because if he died for me to be saved, am I willing to live for him now that I am saved? So I got to reflect on some things in my life. Amen? I got to reflect on those things. I got I to get my roots a little deeper. Because the, the, the taller the tree gets, the more susceptible it is to the winds and the things that can topple it over. So I got to make sure my roots stay deep enough. Then the last thing I want to tell you about communion is a time of recommitment. I want to recommit my less up to the Lord every day. I don't want to live up what I did yesterday or the day before. If God's mercies are new every day, my commitment to serve him ought to be new every day. That's what communion is all about. And I coming together and telling the devil, hey, this call does a virus don't mean we ain't going to get together. We're going to get together. And we're going to celebrate and the ordinance of the church of communion because that's what he told the church to do. And I want you to take your glasses now. Some of our Lord and Savior's broken body. Let's eat ye all of it. And likewise, this shedded blood. Some of them is shedded blood. Let's drink ye all of it. And as often as you do this, you do show the Lord's death until he shall come again. Amen. GYZ. GYZ. Can I hear from you? Give God a mighty praise. Mighty glory before our God. Amen. Want you to want you to keep in mind of some things I want you to keep in mind of. I want you to participate uh, in the brotherhood, uh, the, the women's of uh, the, the covenant sisters, the, the singles, the core ministers of our church, the virtual things that our church is doing. We want you to continue to participate in that. I sent an update on last night to all of our leaders. Uh, the, what we're doing, the focus of our ministry, we want to continue to do that. I want you to pray for this pandemic. Pray for it. And uh, that God will bring the healing that only he can do. But you know what? It's not getting out of the pandemic. It's the issue. It's recognizing God while we're in the pandemic. So, we just, God, I want you to know that, guess what? You don't leave us when trouble comes. You stay right with us. Amen. Let's pray, oh God, for the pandemic, for the healing of the pandemic. Pray for those who have tested positive. Pray for those who are hospitalized. Pray for those families that are bereaved. We want to lift them up, keep them lifted up. Pray for our medical personnel, doctors, nurses, whoever they are, uh, who are, who are risking their lives and their families to be able to save our lives. We pray for them on today as well. And we ask you to continue, Lord, to pray for this ministry and continue to move forward and be faithful to the agenda that God has put on our hearts that we continue to please him and give him the glory and honor that belongs to him. May God bless you. May God keep you. I thank God for each and every one of you. I love you. I miss you so much. I miss you. Amen. I wish I had the opportunity to give you all a hippopotamus hug. You know, that's how big a hug I want to give you to let you know how much we miss you and love you. Stay tuned to the broadcast. Uh, get the broadcast. Get the teaching. Hey, don't forget to share it because that is so important that as I minister to you, make it upon yourself. I'm going to minister to somebody else. Go ahead and share it. Don't be stingy with it. Amen. We want you to be able to touch and impact as many lives as we possibly can. God, we're so grateful again for another service, grateful for the opportunity to come, grateful for this parking lot communion, grateful for the GYZ family. We pray, Lord, that you will continue to be with us, bless us, and keep us, and Lord, that we continue to honor and give you glory in all things. For now unto him who is most able to keep us all from falling, may grace and mercy hold, sustain us, keep us in every good, perfect, and wonderful way, for now, henceforth, and forever. And the people of God say together by hucking your horn, amen, amen, amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you for tuning in today. A CD of today's message can be mailed to you for just $7. Please call the church office at 706-724-1720 and reference today's date or sermon title when placing your order. If you would like to become a member of our church or are in need of prayer, call the church office at 706 724 1720 
or join our prayer call. The information is listed on the screen. Testing. GYZ hey, uh, is a Bible teaching Purvis church Huggins, seeking, Deacon reaching, Huggins has and teaching some all to live for Christ. We invite you to tune in again for our regular broadcasts, Tuesdays at 10.30 a.m., Wednesdays at noon, and Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. You can also follow us on social media at GYZ Augusta. Please be sure to like our pages and even share them with a friend. If this program has been a blessing to you, please consider giving to our ministry. We have many ways to give, including online through the Give Plus app, our church website at gradyyoungzion.org, or you can give easily via cash app. Just type in G-Y-Z-A-U-G. Don't miss another dynamic sermon series led by our own Pastor William B. Blunt starting next week. The keys to a well-lived life. Invite a friend to tune in and be blessed by this teaching. Until we meet again, we pray you have a blessed week. May the Lord continue to cover your families with his hedge of protection and grant you peace in the midst of this pandemic.